Ever wondered how your graphics card transforms raw data to visuals at lighting speed? What if I told you that understanding just a few core concepts of the GPU could make you a much better, not only graphics programmer, but a programmer overall? Because the GPU is not only used for graphics. In this video, we'll break apart the GPU to see what makes them so powerful and how understanding these fundamentals will significantly improve your graphics programming skills. Throughout this video, I will mention how the hardware connects to the programming that we do every day. The GPU, or graphics processing unit, is a hardware that features thousands of lightweight processing units known as shader cores, which is what enables the GPU to work so well with doing small tasks like matrix multiplications. If we zoom in on the GPU, and hide the parts we don't care about, we're left with the VRAM or global memory, as well as the GPU ship. But we will ignore the VRAM for now and jump straight into the GPU ship. The GPU ship consists of graphics processing clusters or shader engine in AMD terms. Inside of here, we can spot the L2 cache, control logic and memory controllers. The L2 cache is memory that is used frequently that gets shared between multiple TPCs. The control logic main tasks are scheduling of the execution. The memory controller on the other hand manages the flow of data. And going further in, we will stumble upon the texture processing unit, TPC. Here we can find the fixed function units, raster engines, polymorphic engines, geometry engines, display engines, audio and video encoding engine and so much more. The raster engine interpolates vertex attributions like color, position and UV coordinates. It also does primitive assembly, depth testing and performs MSAA. The polymorphic engines are used for vertex processing, tessellation and culling. It features things like 3D to 2D handling, hardware culling and clipping of primitives. Then we have the geometry processors which retrieve the vertex data from memory. It handles the primitive assembly as well as early clipping and backface culling. It handles primitive assembly, so setting together vertices in different function like patterns, such as point list, line list, triangle strip, adjacent triangle strip, etc, etc. Then we have the display engine, which handles the output merger but also a lot more. It also does presenting and syncing, color space conversion, blending and vsync. At the TPC level, we also have video encoding, decoding units and audio processing units. And they're usually one to 16 of these fixed function processing units per GPU. And next to these fixed function units are the heart of the GPU, the programmable units, the shader multiprocessors or compute units in AMD terms, the powerhouse unit responsible for most of the GPU's workload. Each SM contains a group of threads called warps, which are the backbone to why GPUs can run so well in parallel. Warps are collections of threads that execute the same instructions simultaneously. Thanks to single instruction multiple data, SIMD architecture. SIMD is key for parallel processing. It runs the same operation like add, subtract and multiply across different data at the same time. The biggest drawback here is that there can be no data sharing between the threads, but that's why they operate on different sets of data. As programmers, it's our job to maximize SIMD efficiency and not slow it down. We do this by following some core principles to not do certain things like branching. Now back to the threads. These threads are referred to as CUDA cores or streaming processors on AMD. The way they share data and collaborate is through the global memory that is located in each SM. As for data in the SM, we can also find the L1 cache, which is just like the L1 cache on the CPU, a place where recurringly used data gets put for easy access. Continuing with what's inside the SM, it's here we find the most valuable player for the income of GPU vendor, the ray tracing and tensor cores. If the GPU has them, they are distributed throughout the SMs in the GPU. Compared to CUDA cores, 
They are not in groups of 32, but they are alone. Whenever a CUDA core stumbles upon a work that is similar to the Ray versus Triangle or matrix multiplication in AI, it will use the available RT and Tensor cores for this type of work. Zooming out a bit, let's mention the VRAM or Video Random Access Memory. It's where the computer stores the data required to render something. It stores it there so it doesn't have to fetch memory from the RAM or hardware. As programmers, it's important that we maximize the amount of data that's on the GPU and minimize the data that gets sent from other places to the GPU. The closer it is in the hardware, usually the faster it is to retrieve it. Now, given all this information, I want to mention what happens when we do a context switch. A context switch in graphics programming happens when we change between different queues like compute queue, copy queue, and render queue. What happens on a hardware level is that all currently used resources, storage, and registers like L1, L2, and internal registers needs to be stored away in context memory or VRAM. While they get stored away, after this happened, we need to flush the current memory and get it ready to process the new one. So even though the context switching itself might not take so long time, having all the memory and caches flushed might stall the processes. This isn't really detrimental, but it's a good pro of learning the hardware of the GPU. So why is all this important? Well, just like knowing the CPU is crucial for optimized coding, knowing some about the GPU is a great backbone for writing GPU code that's optimized as well. Of course, it's not essential, but the more we know what we're dealing with, the more conscious decisions we can make when programming. Especially since game dev is all about using the computer to its fullest potential. Don't neglect the GPU, that's such a big part of the computer. Learn about it, make more conscious decision, and have it in the back of your head when you're coding. And if you want to make more well thought, optimized GPU code, I highly recommend watching this next video that covers my 10 tips and tricks on what we can and should do when shader programming.